Hi, I'm Quantic Dev, and today I'm going to talk about the state of software engineering in 2020. Software engineering has seen explosive growth over the last 20 years, and it seems to be keeping that momentum up. According to the Fortune data, total revenue of the top 15 technology companies in the world was a record 1.67 trillion US dollars in 2019, which is up 2% 2 from 2018. There are more software companies than ever now. In addition, existing non-software companies are introducing more and more software components into their products, anything from cars to washing machine. The future is software, but not all software is created equal. Identifying the most promising and fastest growing areas of software can help you take off your career and projects. Investing in a growing area helps you to find the job easier and get paid better and helps you in finding funding for your projects. So let's not waste time and get right into it. For this video, I will use GitHub Octoverse data as the basis, plus my own experiences and observations as a software engineer with a decade of experience. Growth of programming. 10 million new developers joined the GitHub in 2019. I assume most of the new users are coming from non-US territories, but this is still a huge number. Big respect to GitHub for scaling to such an extent with little to no problems. These new developers contributed 44 million repositories from all countries around the world. 80% of all the code commits were from outside the US. Again, the tech industry is growing very fast outside of US too and GitHub data indicates that. Maybe within several decades, Silicon Valley will have multiple contenders for the first place as the world's center of software engineering. On a side note, GitHub data does not represent the entire world, but it gives a pretty good idea in general trends as it is the largest code hosting provider. Almost 70% of global Fortune 50 companies contributed to open source in the last year, 70% contribution is huge, and according to GitHub, this is a growing number. And not only that, there were 2.9 million organizations on GitHub last year, which sounds ridiculously large, but as more and more companies introduce software components into their process, even bigger numbers will become ordinary. Growth of open source. On average, each open source project on GitHub it contributors from 41 different countries and regions. This again points to the pace of growth outside of the US. After the United States, open source use picked up speed in China, India, and Germany. Developers in China forked and cloned 48% more projects than last year. I guess the growth of software in China is a surprise to no one. The question is not if it will overtake the United States. But when? And if you look at the things at the continent level, Asia is already ahead of the United States and Europe. However, it is sad and somewhat surprising to see South America and Africa so far behind. Tip. I have a dedicated video on how to correctly use GitHub for software development. In that video, I will provide you with my full GitHub workflow while getting some real work done on my Android Docker open source project. I also have useful commentary and tips on efficient GitHub use. If you want to see it, the link is in the description below. Top libraries. The top 50 open source packages in every programming language, including JavaScript, Python, Ruby, etc., have an overwhelming of dependent projects. For instance, despite having an average of less than 40 direct contributors each, popular NPM packages can be dependencies for millions of other repositories. It is no surprise that top dependent packages are of Java, Python, and JavaScript. They are currently top three programming languages, and I do not expect it to change anytime soon. Trending projects. As open source is picking up more steam, contributors to open source is also gaining momentum. I highly recommend contributing to an open source project. It's an excellent opportunity to get into open source community and acquire invaluable experience. In addition, you can list projects that you created and contributed in your resume, which is a great plus. As you can see in the table, last year's most contributed projects 
were also amongst the most useful ones. For instance, Visual Studio Code is one of the best text editors for programming, also one of my favorites. Same goes to TensorFlow, React Native and Kubernetes. They all became invaluable tools, and it is no surprise that people like them and want to improve them with their contributions. Top programming languages. Now it is time to analyze the programming languages themselves. It is no shock that the programming language that is powering most of the web, JavaScript, is still number one. I expect Python to surpass JavaScript at some point, but we will have to wait and see exactly when. In fact, outside of GitHub, Python might already be the number one programming language. As always, Java is near the top along with PHP and C++. What is surprising to me is the meteoric rise of TypeScript. I was predicting that once all the good features of TypeScript end up in JavaScript itself, it will be discarded, just like JavaScript and many others before it. Instead, it seems to be powered through. My thoughts on JavaScript did not change, of course. I still think that using plain modern JavaScript blows TypeScript out of the water. TypeScript adds a great deal of complexity, both in tooling and dependencies, and I do not think it is worth it. However, I'm not an oracle, so we will see if it shares the same fate as CoffeeScript. Data Science and Machine Learning 2019 was the year of data science and machine learning. I fully expect it to continue in the same trajectory for almost the entirety of this decade. There is so much value in analyzing and understanding mass quantities of data, especially coupled with machine learning. The value generated by these two will possibly outpace all other branches of computer science. I would say that the only thing that can dethrone data science and ML will be a breakthrough in quantum computing. Otherwise, it's a good idea to invest some time into the hottest branch of computer science. As I always say, if you invest in a technology that is growing, you can grow with it. Machine learning is finding uses in every aspect of life. Predicting shopping behavior with ML and serving customized recommendations is a good example. Virtual personal assistants like Siri or Alexa. Automated translation services like Google and Microsoft Translate. Email spam filters, automated customer support, etc. are all becoming more and more ML-based. Cloud computing, DevOps, and security. Complexity and scale of software systems are increasing. In addition, specific tasks like machine learning require unconventional server hardware like TPUs, namely Tensor Processing Unit, which are custom-designed hardware to accelerate machine learning tasks. This results in an immense in-house effort to accommodate servers and maintain them. The most sensible way around this problem is using DevOps tools to automate deployment and maintenance of your servers. It is also reasonable to move these servers to the cloud providers, so you will not ever have to see another bare metal server again. As the necessity for cloud hosting and DevOps increases, these skills are becoming increasingly desirable in the market. If you have the desire to work with hardware and networking, it would be a good investment to experiment with cloud providers and DevOps tools. Most cloud providers hand out generous free tiers, so you can create a free account on Google Cloud, Amazon Web Services, Azure, or any other small vendor and start experimenting and learning right away. Obviously, moving all your data online has major security implications. This increases the need for security awareness for anyone working with DevOps or cloud. Besides, it also increases the need for dedicated software and network security engineers. Investing time in learning the security implications of your cloud DevOps decisions is essential. If you plan to interview for a DevOps or any infrastructure position, you should expect a heavy emphasis on security. Conclusion Software is moving fast, and it is fusing into all other areas of industry. As it is a growing field, learning to program and improving your skills in software engineering can get you great returns in the future. Moreover, identifying the fastest growing areas of software and investing your time into them can get you to even better places. Keep learning and try to find opportunities that you can capitalize on or products that can serve a niche in a growing field of software. When that niche becomes mainstream, you can end up with a successful product in your hands, which can become your future success. 
If it fails, it's an immense experience on the path to becoming a product person. I will continue to put out software engineering and product making and management videos. If you want to see them, do not forget to sub. And if you want this video to reach more fellow engineers, give it a like. And I'll see you next time.